Good morning, social media. I am Kristen Blumetti. I am a blue status presenter with Unique Cosmetics, and I am here with you for another episode of What the Heck Do I Do With That? This episode, I'm going to be using Unique's Palette 4, but um, you will also be learning what to do with any of the blue or brown eyeshadows that you have in your makeup bag that may be collecting dust. So the whole purpose of these shows, I guess, that I do, is to help you learn how to use products that maybe you bought or got for free or however you acquired them and they're just sitting in your makeup bag collecting dust. I'm gonna teach you how to use those or and or teach you new ways to use some of the products that you are already using so you can get the most out of the makeup that you already have. Um, Please, if you like what you see, give me some thumbs up, give me some hearts, but what I like the most is comments and questions. I am here for you, so please comment below. Let me know what questions you have and what things you want to learn more about. Um, and then if you feel like you've learned anything, please share this video. Share it all across social media, wherever you want to put it. I'm an open book. Um, if you don't have time to watch this, um, sometimes these can run 15, 20, 30 minutes long and you want to learn how to use your browns and your blues eyeshadows, but you don't have time right now, click that little drop down menu. If you're on, um, Facebook, that is click the little drop down menu in the upper right corner and you can save this to watch later. Um, okay, let's get started. Before we get started, let me just say my lip is not bloody. <laughs> This is actually, I have a dry spot on my lips and I wore lip stain for like the past three days and it really stains and it especially stains dry lips, which is why it's so important to exfoliate and condition your lips no matter what lip products you're using. Um, but yeah, that's just leftover lip stain and it just happened to stay in that one spot because I had a dry patch there, but we're going to cover that up later, so don't worry about it. Okay, so today we're talking about palette number four. If you don't have palette number four from Unique, but you do have or are curious about using blues and browns, I am here to tell you blue eyeshadow is not out. It did not go out with the 80s. Well, it did go out and it's back. Let's just say that. Um, but it's better than ever. So I love palettes in general because typically all the guesswork is taken out for you. All the colors are made to go together. They complement each other well. You have a variety, you get a lot of value for your money because you have so many combinations of colors, uh, eyeshadow combinations that you can do with one product. Um, the other thing I wanna show you is the versatility of how you can use these eyeshadows for other things as well. Um, now this particular video was requested by one of my customers, one of my awesome VIPs, Corrales. I miss you, girl. She just moved away from Arizona and I miss her. But she has palette four. She hasn't used it yet and we need to change that. So here we go. First, I'm just gonna put some foundation on. I guess I could have done this before we started the video, but I didn't, so here we go. Uh, liquid foundation is my favorite go-to and then we'll jump right into that palette. So I did already prime my face. I used Glorious face and eye primer, it is like putting a layer of sheer silk on your face. Primer is a must. It fills in your pores, it fills in the fine lines, it keeps your makeup on top of your skin instead of soaking into your skin, which is, you don't want your makeup to do that. Um, it also helps your makeup stay longer, appear smoother, um, it just, I mean, it just, so, and it feels amazing. Like at the very least I put primer on because it feels good, <laughs> but it has so many, so many benefits other than that. All right. So I'm just buffing in some foundation right now, and then we'll get right to the palette. We'll do the eyes first because that's kind of what it's meant for. And then I'm going to show you other things you can do using some blues and browns on your face. All right, <clears throat> so here we go. I am going to do a combination of the colors. Now, there are seven shades in here. Somebody do the math and tell me how many different combinations of one, two, or three 
um, shadows put together. Obviously, there's seven combinations if you only use one. If you use two, I don't know, that's algebra. I liked algebra in school, but it's been a long time, so I don't really remember the formula to figure that out. <laughs> it's a lot, okay? There are lots of combinations you get from one palette. <clears throat> so here we go. I am going to start... Corrales, you and I have similar coloring too. Brown eyes, brown hair, okay? <clears throat> blue is complementary to brown, okay? Which is why they put blues and browns together in a palette. But if you also think about if you have brown eyes, blue is gonna be your complementary color. Now, I am a firm believer that there is no rules for who can wear what colors, okay? There's always the like, are you a warm? Are you a cool? Which one are you? And I think you're whatever you wanna be. If you like it, Wear it with confidence and be happy. Um, it's all in the technique of applying it. It's all in um, blending. It's all in making sure the colors go together, which is another reason I love the palettes because they all go together. So wear what you want. There's no rules. There's no makeup police that are going to come give you a ticket if you wear blue and you don't have brown eyes. So do what you want. But I'm going to use Cheerful for my... Um, Actually, wait, first I'm going to use Tender. <laughs> I'm gonna use Tender, it's kind of a nice, you cannot see it, the coloring here is horrible. Can you see? Mm, no, anyway, it's got a tiny bit of a shimmer to it and it's kind of like a pale mm, champagne color. It's just really light and that's gonna be my base. So I'm just going to press that on all over my lid. Okay, when you're doing any eyeshadow, you wanna press it on first before you do any blending, just to make sure the color is where you want it to be. All right, so this is Tender again. I also love using Tender, which I'll show you later, as a facial highlight. You can do it um, not just on your eyes, but it's just got that right amount of shimmer that it can add a little bit of a highlight to like cheekbones um, and different areas of your face. The highlight. Now I'm even going to bring this up under my brows today because I want to show you what you can do with palette four. There, I I use a lot of different highlight colors for my under brow. <clears throat> this one has a shimmer to it. I don't always use a shimmer there, but you can. And I just wanted to show you that you can do so much with palette four. All right, so that tender went all over my eye from brow to lip to lash. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take Cheerful. Cheerful is this blue, it's like a pretty, it almost looks like um, denim, like a denim blue. I'm gonna take that, tap it, and I'm using the same brush, I'm just cleaning it off on a little microfiber cloth in between. This is gonna be my transition color. So I'm gonna do a little on the outer corner. I'm gonna do a little on the inner corner. We're gonna do a halo look today. A little in the inner corner, and then I'm going to bridge the two together. I need more, but did you see how I did that? So a little outer corner, a little inner corner, and then a bridge over the crease. Okay, this is just a transition color, so it doesn't have to be super dark. We're going to go in with a darker color in a sec. <clears throat> See, it's just creating a tiny bit of dimension. Let's do the other side. Outer corner. Inner corner. And a bridge. So the halo look is when you do the your darker shade, both inner and outer corner, and then you bridge them over your crease. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more to this side. And it keeps the center of your eye really nice and bright. Um, I love this look. You can do this with so many different combinations of colors. You just need one or two shades, a light, a dark, and then you can do like even darker if you wanna add even more drama. All right, so there's my um, highlight and my transition color. Now I'm gonna go in, <clears throat> excuse me, 
And I'm going to use, just for fun, just to show you how you can mix and match all these colors. So right now I have this nice light champagne. I have this denim blue. Um, and now I'm going to go and use, I think it's called secretive. Yeah, secretive. <laughs> Love this stuff. It is going to go um, in the same place I did the blue, but I'm going to try to not cover up the blue, but just um, accent it. So I'm just going around the blue a little bit, kind of trying to just stay on the outer edge of where I put the blue. So you can still see a little bit of that blue coming through. Blue coming through. Secretive is like a pretty, almost a bronze. In fact, it would be really kind of pretty if you're doing like a metallic look, like on top of your bronzer. But it does have quite a bit of shimmer, so. Um, I like to try to keep shimmer on the eyes. Just depends though. Okay, now for just a tiny bit extra oomph, I'm gonna take Triumphant, which is now this dark navy blue. So pretty. Both the, these two blues are matte. This light, light blue right here is a tiny bit of a shimmer. So it's a, it's a mix of different. So I'm going to that dark blue matte and I'm just gonna do the outer corner on this one, right along the lash line. And then just a tiny bit in the outer corner and over. So right along the lash line. Now I've used the same brush for all of this just to give you an idea that you can do that. I would typically prefer different brushes for certain things, but this is kind of like baby steps. Baby steps. It's so much fun to mix colors and then blend them together and just see what happens. And a lot of times I'll put some colors on my face and I will be like, ooh, that's not working. And then I get my whole face done and I blend it out and I'm like, oh, this is one of my favorite things. Okay, I'm going to go in now with Honest, which is that lighter blue. It's like a sky blue almost with a tiny bit of shimmer. And I'm going to bump up that center color a little bit more with that blue. Remember we put Tender on first, which was just a nice light highlight. So we're bumping it up. Tender. And I'm gonna bump up even just a little more. I'm, I'm using almost every color in here. Again, I don't wanna cover up the blues that I've done. In fact, I'm gonna go back to Cheerful and just add a tiny bit more blue to make sure. Cheerful was the first blue that I used to make sure that you can still see that blue come through when I'm done. And you guys, don't be afraid to put too much on. You can blend anything away. So if you feel like you've put too much on, just start blending. And I just have a really light hand. You don't need a lot, like a tiny bit of pigment goes such a long way if you have good, high quality makeup. Okay, there's my blue. Now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna pick up um, Arrogant, which is this like sandy brown kind of, tan almost, and do kind of the same thing I did with that bronze and just darken the blue, kind of go around, but not cover it up. Just to give it a little more depth and shadow. All right, now I'm gonna clean off my brush. I've got all the colors applied just to kind of soften. So now I like to just go along the edges everywhere I've applied color and blend. So you're just going back and forth. This is where if you feel like you have too much, you can blend more. Um, if you feel like 
you have some harsh lines, you just soften those lines. I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out so far. It matches my shirt. Woo! All right. So we've got um, most of the eyes done. Now I'm going to show you something else you can do with this palette that I love. I'm going to take a liner brush now. Now you have two ways you can do this. You can wet your liner brush, which I think today I will do. Or you can do it dry for just a little bit of a softer look. But I'm just going to spritz my brush just lightly with just water. Okay, so it's just damp. And now you, in this palette, you have a couple options, okay? You can use Brave as a nice dark liner. You can use Triumph, Triumphant as a nice dark liner. I'm going to go with Triumphant today. I love, love, love using shadow to line um, because it's so easy. Because watch, this brush is going to do the work for me. I'm just going to press it. Just press it in, okay? Just press it right along the lash line. I don't have to have a steady hand. I don't have to draw a straight line. The brush does all the work for me and I can make it soft or not. You know, like when you apply it wet like I just did, it kind of gives it a little bit more of a um, Sorry, sharper line if you apply it wet, but if you apply it dry, it's going to give a little bit of a softer look. Now I'm just using whatever's left over on my brush for my bottom lashes because I want that to be a little softer. So just press it up against the lashes. Yes, such a pretty liner. Okay, now the other eye, I'll just wet again. We'll dry that off. Okay, here we go. I'm doing a tiny bit of a um, like a wing and but look how easy it was because I just literally press the brush up against my lash line and wherever I want my wing to be. And again, all the colors are made to go together in this palette. So no guesswork. All right, so let's whatever's left over, we'll do bottom. Just pressing it, just getting it right up against the lash, and just really just barely tapping it. Just barely tapping it there. Okay. Liner done. Gorgeous. Love it. Okay, cleaning off my little brush here. Now, here's the fun part. Um, make sure make sure you clean this off for this part, especially since I just used blue. Um, I'm going to line my brows using this palette and that same brush that I just did for liner. So a liner brush, again, this is the liner shader brush. It's a liner brush on one side and then a regular eyeshadow sh um, brush on the other side. So it's great to go with these because you can do so many things with these two things. Um, so here we go. First I'm going to comb my brows up a little bit. I like to go up first and then I kind of just smooth them out because I line the bottom first so I want to make sure there's no crazy hairs on the bottom so make sure you have a clean brush and today I am going to wet it again same as the liner if you want your brows to be softer just don't wet your brush be a little bit softer you can use um, arrogant or brave or a combination depending on your hair color and the look you want I am going to use brave which is the darker brown um, oh my gosh, I just sprayed water on my little mirror here. And now I can't see in it. Dry it off. My lip looks really bad. It literally looks like my lip's just bleeding, but I swear it's not. All right, here we go. So I have a dampened brush and brave. I'm going to go just along the bottom. I'm following pretty much my natural lash line. We do have brow stencils 
if you're not sure how you want to shape your brow, a stencil is a great way to just kind of practice, okay? And figure out what shape you like. That's how I started with a stencil, just filling it in. It's a lot easier and faster than doing it this way. But now that I've gotten this down, um, this is how I do it now, just freehand. But I definitely did not do this up first. Okay, so I lined the bottom first and I extended mine out a little bit to the edge. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the top, but look where I start. I don't start on the inner corner, I start in a little bit. And I make an arch and then I come out to meet that. Then I start to fill in. Okay, so using that liner shader brush, with a very light hand, you wanna be careful, you're not going too heavy here. And I'm filling in that brow. Now, once I get to about here, I don't want to add any more pigment because I want to do like a, like a faded in. So now whatever's left on my brush, I just start like pulling in to that inner corner and going to the edge where I started. And blending it in. So it's nice and soft on the inner corner. Now, if you see here, I feel like I went up a little higher here, but you can always fix that with concealer, so it's no problem. All right, we're gonna go to the next brow. So I'm gonna start, hey Melissa, I'm gonna start here again, wetting the brush. I only wet it for the first line for the bottom of the brow. Look at the difference. I mean, my, my brows are so sad by themselves. So sad. Um, I just did it again, I just sprayed water Again, thanks for the thumbs up, Melissa. Um, here we go. All right, so back to Brave. And we start on the inner corner on the bottom. Following the natural lash line. And drawing it all the way over. Bring it down a bit. Using the tip of that liner brush. On your lunch break. <laughs> nice. All right, then coming up here again, not starting at the inner corner but over just a little creating that arch and then coming down to meet your point and then we start to fill in now no two brows are the same, and that's okay. Okay, they weren't made to be twins. You wanna get them similar, but they don't have to match identically. All right, I'm at the point where I don't wanna add any more color to my brush. I'm just gonna use what I have left over to um, blend in again to where I started. and get a nice, soft, gradual, faded in brow. I'm gonna come back over here and just come in a little bit more, make it a little bit more even. There we go, good to go. Now, another thing you can do is take a brow gel um, to kind of just set it. And this is where I just kind of very lightly brush it through. 
This will keep my brows in place and soften it a little. Thanks, Melissa. And I'm not even done. We gotta get everything done before we. Now, if you're a if you are crazy like me and you gotta tweeze your brows like every day, my tip is to do it after you've lined your brows. Because once you line your brows, and I thought this is what I gotta fix, then you know which hairs are out of place, which ones do you actually need to tweeze and you won't end up over tweezing like I have done so many times in the past. Um, so like right now I can see there's like two little hairs up here at the top that are outside my preferred brow line. And so now I can tweeze them and I know <clears throat> that they're not supposed to be there. Okay, let's finish the eyes and do mascara now. I usually do mascara at the end, but I just wanna get the eyes done, and then I'm gonna show you what else you can do with palette four. So I like to warm up my brow, uh, brow curler? Don't curl your brows. My lash curler. <laughs> Melissa, I used palette four on my eyes. I use like every color, except arrogant, I think. Oh no, except Brave. I used everything. So um, Brave I used for my brows and I used every other color on my eyes. I just kinda, you know, I did like a halo, started with Tender, um, added some of that blue, the blues, and then I added Brave, and then blended it all together. Make sure if you heat up your curler that you it's not too hot before you put it on your eyes. I get to say that. Okay, so lashes are curled. <clears throat> Let's go to mascara. 3D Fiber Lashes Plus, mascara, opening both tubes. The gel is a great basic mascara by itself. I'm going to apply that first to the lower lashes. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I'm so excited my customers are starting to receive their new, newly reformulated mascara and I'm already getting messages from them like, oh my gosh, I love it, it's looking good. So I can't wait, if you haven't gotten yours yet, if you're local, you can come pick it up, come pick it up um, if you pre-ordered. And if you're not local, it's in the mail, it should be to you very soon. So we're doing gel all over. Just like regular mascara. Love the new brush, it really separates the lashes. Nicely, straight to fibers. I like to kind of close my eye just a little bit to make sure that um, the fibers don't go in my eye and to make sure that I'm just getting the fibers from mid lash to tip. That's where you want the fibers. You don't want to get fibers really close to your eye. All right. Fly away there. Now I like to kind of blow dry them, just a quick blow dry to get any extra fibers that didn't stick out of there. I'm gonna put it on high. Okay, look at that. Don't don't look at my hair, just look at my lashes. <laughs> Luckily, this is not a how to do your hair channel because nobody would watch me because uh, my hair is horrible right now and I really need to color it. All right, now we're gonna seal with gel, okay? Step three is always sealing with gel. You've gotta do this step. This is what keeps the fibers in place all day. Seals them in, they don't move, okay? If you've got fibers moving off your eyes, you're probably skipping this step or just not doing it enough. Done. Okay. I've got one little, one little teensy tiny clump. Okay, not, uh, gone, gone already, perfect now. Okay, I love this thing, this lash comb. It just gets 
if you do end up with any clumps, which I have to tell you, I hardly do, but if you do, just brush through it and they're gone. I'm gonna do the other eye now. Now I'm gonna tell you my left eye, which is the one I'm doing now, my lashes are naturally a lot shorter than my right eye. They're also uneven for some reason. <laughs> they grow like spots are long, spots are short. They also go really close, close together. So basically my left eye sucks. Um, it does all the things you don't want your eyelashes to do naturally. So I spend a little extra time on my left eye usually to get it to match my right eye. But this mascara helps so much, especially that length, because again, it's short. My lashes are just short on my left eye, and I don't know why. Okay, let's blow dry. Now listen, I did just get a fiber in my eye, but it didn't hurt. I felt it in there and I blinked a couple times and I'm pretty sure it's out because I don't feel it anymore. But it's just to tell you that, you know, it's not the end of the world. These are hypoallergenic. They're all natural. If you get a fiber in your eye, don't panic, okay? Just get it out like you would get an eyelash out of your eye. Actually, my left eye did pretty good, but I'm going to add a little bit on the corner just for some oomph. So I'm doing a little more gel. I'm gonna do a little more fibers on my left eye just because my left lashes are naturally shorter. So I wanna to try to get them to match my right side. Let's blow it away. That's pretty good, right? It might even be longer now. That's the problem. <laughs> Sometimes I get my left eye longer. All right, let's seal. Seal with gel. Always, 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 always. Nice and covered. So this new formula is the bomb.com. So I'm just going to be honest and tell you the last formula we had, when you would seal it with gel, it would like pull all the fibers off. And that obviously defeats the purpose. Um, it also lasted like a month, the last formula. This one, I've already had a month, and it's like, it's brand new still. I'm so excited. So excited. All right, so mascara's done. I think we're good there. I don't even think I need to comb through. That's tech, basically one coat. I kind of did one and a half coats on this eye, just because these lashes are shorter. But, you know, nobody, again, nobody's eyes are the same. Okay, let's go back to the palette. What else can we do with this? Okay, we've done eyes. I used like every color on my eyes. I used it to do my brows. Okay, you have two options for brows right here. These browns, depending on your hair color. Um, like multiple options for eyeshadow. I just used all of them today and this is what we ended up with and I'm loving it. But I wanna show you something else you can do. You can contour with this palette, okay? So excited about this. So you could use like a blusher brush if you have one, um, but our contour brush is obviously the best for contouring. The shape of the brush, it's two-sided. You have contour side and the highlight side. It's just perfect for what you need here. So I'm gonna use Brave. Again, you could also use Arrogant depending on your skin tone or how uh, the look you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and get Brave, which you need to be brave because it is a dark brown and I'm putting it right on my cheek. Oops, I got a how did I get a fiber there? I don't know, but luckily they just come right off. Okay, it goes from the top of your ear down under your cheekbone. Okay, and I'm just putting it on there. Looks like my face is dirty right now, but just wait. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side, top of the cheekbone, just under the cheekbone. You wanna drag it down. Don't, not coming too far. The great about where, when you suck your cheeks in, Right about where they suck in the most, that's where you want to stop. And that's a good way to, if you're new at contouring, just go, and that's where you want that contour line to go. Okay? Now when you blend, you're going to blend up and away. Up, up, and away from the center of your face out 
and up from the center of your face out and up okay now I don't mean up like onto your cheek okay but you're just kind of fading it in so it looks like a shadow it should look like a shadow under your cheekbone see that there's no shadow there but it looks like there is <laughs> that's the whole point of contour add a little more here to match the other side there we go okay and I just instantly thinned my face I just lost like two pounds in my face with that and I'm not done um, now I'm gonna use arrogant for my nose because I I don't know, I'm not as brave on contouring my nose, um, depending on, again, the, ooh, the look you want. You're gonna go right down the side of the bridge of your nose. And yes, I put too much on that side, but don't panic, okay? Because we can blend. Right down the side of the bridge, I blend slightly up and slightly down using the shape of the brush to my advantage, okay? Up towards the brow a little bit, down the side of the nose. And then I like to kind of just go across here. Okay, see now it's nice and blended. Even though I put too much on it first, there's no panicking. No panicking allowed in makeup. Okay, last spot I'm gonna contour is my forehead. Um, same thing, same color, and I'm just going to tap it along my hairline for now. Okay, so just all along the hairline. Okay, now the same thing, um, blending up and away. You're gonna go up into the hairline and away from the center of the face. Okay, now you can bring this down more if you wanna really minimize your forehead. If you have a really large forehead, you can bring it down more. I like to do it just right along the hairline. I don't think I have a huge forehead, but I do wanna add um, a little bit of dimension. See how it does that? The lighting is kind of crappy. Um, but now I have dimension to my face. Love it. Okay. Highlighting. Now, I typically highlight using concealer, which I'm gonna show you really quick, but then I wanna show you how to accent your highlight, again, using the palette with that tender that I told you about. So I'm gonna do concealer um, under my eye in a big triangle. So you bring it from the center, inside corner, down to where your nose ends, so right there up to the temple and in, okay? Inner corner, down to where your nose ends, up to the temple, and in. Make sure I have enough on both sides. Now we blend it, well wait, I'm not done. I'm gonna do a little bit in the center of my forehead as well a tiny bit above the brow. And this is where you can clean up the brow if you made any mistakes. A tiny bit in the center of the bridge of my nose. I'm doing this very professionally, just dabbing it on. You could totally use a brush, uh, your fingertips, um, but you know, this works for me. A little on the chin. Okay, crazy looking, right? Looks like I have chicken pox. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take my concealer brush. No, I'm gonna use my found. No, I'm gonna use my foundation brush for under the eyes. No, I'm not. I can't decide what I want to do. Concealer brush. It's just smaller. It's just smaller than my foundation brush, so I have more control. Um, and I'm just spreading now. What I just applied, I'm just spreading it. This is not blending yet. I will blend it, but I don't like to blend with a brush concealer because concealer is a little heavier than foundation and if you blend it with a brush you can end up with stroke line or brush strokes showing um, and obviously we don't want that that's going to look like more fine lines we don't want more fine lines we want less fine lines 
So I just use a brush to spread it and then I'm gonna use a blending bud to blend it and that will minimize pores and fine lines, which is what we all want. So just using the brush to spread my concealer where I want it to be. So here's where you can fix your um, brows if you need to with the concealer. You're going up and over. So you can kind of fix the shape right here if you have any issues. Now, I probably should have done this before I did my brows and then gone back and fixed if I needed to because I don't definitely don't want to cover up the work I did with my brows. I've got some people coming over to give us some quotes on um, a few things we're going to do in the kitchen. We're going to do a very a light remodel of our kitchen. We're not going to spend a ton of money on it because I don't know how long we're going to live in this house. <laughs> but I've wanted to update it since I moved in. And even if we are going to sell it in the next five years, an updated kitchen will help with that, right? So I'm kind of excited to get some fresh new look in my kitchen. How do I look? Crazy, right? <laughs> Not done yet. Don't worry. All right. Blending bud. Spritz it. And here is where you're going to blend and eliminate fine lines, okay? I need to be better with my spritzing. Now I sprayed all over this mirror and I can't see in it. Dab, 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 dab. Like to use a blending bud for this. This is how you're going to really get that like porcelain finish look. And it's not going to settle into fine lines. It will minimize them. It presses it in to your pores as opposed to like wiping it over the top so that you can really get a nice finish. So again, just like the eyeshadow, if you feel like you put on too much concealer, just keep blending. Just keep blending. And you're dabbing. You're not wiping. Okay? Please don't wipe your concealer on. Dab, dab, dab. Okay, you can see one side is pretty much blended. This side's not, but look, at it just, it just fades away and brightens up your face. I may have put too much on, but I'm just going to keep blending. Because that's how we roll. Now, your shade of concealer, if you're using it like I am to highlight, should be one to two shades lighter than your foundation. And if you don't know what shade to use for either, message me. I'm an expert. Help you figure it out. Almost done blending. Almost, almost. Oh, itchy nose. I always get an itchy nose. <laughs> okay, really under the eye, you really want to press it in. And wherever you might have larger pores. So it's not going to accentuate your um, fine lines. I'm just dragging a little bit of that extra down my jaw, jawline. All right, I'm just gonna go back to my contour brush and now blend again, just so there's no like stark line between my contour and my um, highlight that I just did. 
I want it all to blend. The word of the day is blend and every day. All right, blending is what will really um, make your makeup look flawless. Oops, wrong side of the brush. It's okay. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna go to the um, highlight side and I've just discovered this product. This is our uh, mineral concealer. It's actually just a loose powder. And this is the color Fresh, which is super light, okay? It's a really, it's the lightest color we have. I love it to use to set highlight. So I'm using the highlight side of our brush now and just pressing it in everywhere I just highlighted. And it's just gonna set that highlight and help again eliminate the look of fine lines and it's such a super fine mineral based powder. So it's not gonna look like caked on or anything. You're not gonna really even feel it, but it's just adding that little extra oomph to your highlight. Hey, Carrie. Hey, if any of my gym people are watching, I'm teaching a new class tonight at Lifetime Fitness um, in Gilbert, seven o'clock. Barbell strength. I'm super excited. A little nervous, but mostly excited. <laughs> All right, so I've set it now with that. Now, if you ever do your makeup and you're like, something's missing, it's probably blush. I did not wear blush for like my whole life. Um, but now that I realize the power of blush, I like have to have it especially if you're contouring okay because your contours here your highlights up here you need something to bridge that gap so you don't need a lot okay like I just tap it swirl it in the mirror to kind of even it out and then right along the cheekbone in between the contour and the highlight and then blend up and down along that bone up and down up and down one more dab other side and it just really brings everything together adds that like soft natural glow we have five different blush colors to choose from this is sweet which I love for my everyday every skin tone um, it's really a nice soft blush we do have other ones that are a little more bold for different looks or different skin tones if you have a darker skin tone sweet might not be enough for you so we can give you one that's gonna help you out in that in that zone. Okay. I think lips is all I have left, right? I do wanna set my whole face now. Oh, my pressed powder is broken. Look, that is very sad, but I can still use it. I just get all the pieces in there. Man, what a sad day. Good thing I have a backup, but Look at all that in there broken. It's okay, we can still use it because I usually use a powder puff brush anyway, so I'm just gonna press it into those broken pieces. Just like I did with the blush, I can swirl it in the mirror to kind of even it out and then press all over. Okay, again, don't wipe. Please don't wipe your, your, bron your whatever this is called, powder on. Press it on, dab it all over, and then you can kind of brush off any extra that you end up with. Oh, flawless, flawless skin that I don't actually have. It's an illusion. <laughs> Yay makeup. Okay, let's fix this lip, shall we? So if you weren't watching at the beginning, I do not have a fat lip. It's not a bloody lip. It's not even chapped. It feels perfectly smooth, but I must have had a dry spot there because I've worn lip stain for the past three days and that's where it decided to really stain. <laughs> and um, it's still there. So we're gonna cover it up. I'm gonna go with, <clears throat> hmm. I'm gonna go with a nude lip today. I'm gonna use Pouty, which is my favorite go-to nude liner, okay? It's, gosh, really any skin cone. Any skin tone can wear it. Um, it's just a nice, soft, neutral, 
And I'm going to overline my lips, but only on the top. So you can overline your lips if you want to add a little bit of fullness. And especially when I'm doing a nude lip because it's such a light color, I feel like I can overline a little more than if I was doing a red where it would be kind of clown-like. But with a nude lip, you can overline maybe a little bit more. So I'm just gonna barely go outside my natural lip line, just barely. Now the trick to overlining though is you only overline to about here and then you need to start coming back in. You need to bring it in, start, drop the landing gear down so that you end up on your natural corner. Because if you're outlining or overlining the out corner, then it's gonna look weird. So start to bring it in. And end on your natural corner. You don't want it out here for that. But look at the difference. Look at this lip and look at this lip. And all I did was line so far. I don't out overline my bottom lip because I have a full bottom lip and my top lip is thin. But if you had thin lips, top and bottom, you can overline both or the other way around, whatever works for you. So now I have a fuller top lip. Now, the reason I chose nude is because I really want to cover this up. So I'm going to use my liner. Just cover that up. And now I'm going to line. Right along the natural line. Now I am going to fill in with the liner. I just feel like my lip products stay better when I do that, but depending on the look you want, you don't have to do that. See, look, it's not even a dry spot. It went on nice and smooth there. It's so weird that the stain held on there so much better. So I've lined my whole lip. Now my favorite, 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 favorite lipstick of all time is well to do. Let me find it. Uh oh, where is it? Oh no, I can't find it. I'm oh here it is. Whew. That was scary. Well to do. Nude neutral. I must have worn it on top of something because there's a little bit of pink on there. <laughs> so I'm just gonna wipe it off really quick. I don't want any other colors today. I just want well to do. Now you could totally use a lip brush to apply this. Um, but I'm just gonna slap it on. Mm, mm, mm. That's my favorite lip. I think I need a tiny bit more blush um, since I did such a dramatic contour. I really need to match the blush to that so that it all ties together. Plus maybe my powder covered it up a little bit. So I'm just adding a little bit of blush right to the cheekbone. Blend, blend, blend. I think we're good to go. Oh, I forgot to show you one other thing. The other thing I was gonna do with palette four, tender as a facial highlighter, okay? You can use your fingertip or you can use a brush. Just get a little bit of it there. And now only on the highest points of your highlighted area, so the highest point of my cheekbone, there and there, I'm just dabbing it on a tiny bit and a little bit right on the bridge of my nose, maybe a tiny bit right above my brows uh, and then rubbing it in, and you can't really see this on the video, but it's kind of just like a little boost to your highlight. And you only do that on the highest points. 
All right, you guys, if you have any questions, any requests for the next episode of What the Heck Do I Do With That, please let me know. Um, any feedback is appreciated. If you have questions on how to order any of these products, let me know. Reach out to me. I'll post the link below to order, and have a wonderful day.